here today with Vallejo attorney Robert McConnell, who's been practicing law and handling bankruptcy cases since 1973. And Robert is going to give us a little update on Chapter 9 bankruptcy and a few pointers about uh, what's happening and what the stages are that we're going through. And uh, let me turn it over now to you, Robert. Well, thank you. As, as you know, the city has actually now filed the Chapter 9 petition. That was done at the end of April. So the first step in this entire process is the filing of the Chapter 9 petition. When this was given to the court clerk, the court issued an automatic restraining order, which is like an injunction, and it says to creditors, back off, don't try to collect, status quo, everybody sort of goes on hold. So, so, so far, the only thing that has actually happened to date is the filing of the petition, coupled with the granting of some temporary orders. Those temporary orders are to establish deadlines. And one of the deadlines that's most applicable is the objections to the filing. As you know, many creditors and interested parties have argued that the city is not entitled to file a Chapter 9 petition. You do have to meet criteria. So the judge has set a deadline of June 27th at high noon for the filing of objections. That means that the court has to receive objections to us being in a Chapter 9 by that deadline. I believe the judge is anticipating that there are going to be objections filed because he's already set a status conference on the hearing of these objections, and that will be set uh, for June 27th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This is a Friday, so needless to say, these hearings are not going to be very long in length. The status conference is really an opportunity for the court to get a feeling for what's involved in the case, to establish some deadlines by which things will have to be done. And one of the things that will probably take place at this status conference is to establish a briefing schedule as to whether we should be entitled to file bankruptcy, whether we should not be entitled to file bankruptcy, or in this case, what we call it as a, an adjustment of debts. I would anticipate that the judge will give each side at least 21 days to file their respective briefs, plus another seven to 14 days for the response brief by the city. So probably the city will have to file its brief, the objections will be heard, and then any response, or in any way that the judge wishes to establish it, I would look for a hearing on these objections, which would be the next step in this process, probably by mid-August, maybe even Labor Day. That is going to be like a mini-trial. At this mini-trial, we're going to have accountants come in and testify, either through written testimony or direct testimony on the stand. The accountants for the city will say, yes, we're unable to meet our debts as we come due, and secondly, the accountants for the unions and the other interested parties who object to us being there will say, no, they're able to pay their bills and here's why. It will be up to ju the judge, Judge McManus, the chief judge of the Eastern District of California and Sacramento, to decide whether or not we meet the criteria for being in Chapter 9. As you know, we filed this Chapter 9 at the end of May before we were actually out of money, according to our projection, but we're supposed to be out of money by the end of June. By the time the hearings are actually going to take place, we'll know for sure. We'll have a much clearer picture of our budgetary considerations by that time. Also, the state of California will probably have chimed in as to how much money is going to come to the city or how much is not going to come. So our entire budget picture will probably be much more correct and complete by the time these hearings take place. At the hearing, the judge will either decide that we belong in Chapter 9 or we don't belong in Chapter 9. If the judge says we're not entitled to be there, the case is dismissed. We go back to where we were on the day before we filed the petition. All the contracts remain in effect, all the debts are due, all the interest has to be paid, and we'll have to scramble to come up with the money. If he decides we remain in Chapter 9, then they'll actually issue an order that says relief is ordered, and that means we're going to go forward. The next step, from the city's perspective, will probably be the filing of a motion to reject executory contracts. Executory contracts are nothing more than where each side has to do something for the other side. Common example, the Book of the Month Club. You have to buy so many books and they have to sell them to you within a certain time period. The main fight in the Chapter 9, of course, will be over the collective bargaining agreements, the labor agreements. The city will attempt to reject those contracts. The union will want them to be upheld and be kept in place. Where we come out of that is anybody's guess at the moment. There is some background information that might be considered by the judge in Orange County, the judge at the trial level in Los Angeles. 
was asked to do the same thing. He did reject those executory contracts, but he put some of the clauses in effect concerning grievances and, and disputes over wage conditions. So that judge sort of picked, uh, picked and chose what he would put into it. Our judge in Sacramento, Judge McManus, is a pretty strict constructionist. He'll probably stick much closer to the law, just as he did when he issued the deadlines by which objections could be filed. His reasons for setting the objections by June 27th, the fact that we had to publish a notice in the local newspaper once a week for three weeks. By the time those notices are expired, we'll be just about at or certainly past the June 27th cutoff date. So we have a judge in Sacramento who tends to follow the law very closely. He doesn't read a lot into it, and he's not going to become an advocate from a legislative standpoint. I think you'll find a pretty strict interpretation of the code. But remember, the code is vaguely written. The history of Chapter 9 and the labor contracts is not well known. When Chapter 11 started to be used to reject labor contracts in the past, they were permitted to do so. The labor movement got upset, they went to Congress, and they had that change. Those changes were made specifically in the Chapter 11 law. But those changes were not put into the Chapter 9 law. So we don't have as, as clear of a legislative intent on what the legislature wanted when Chapter 9s are filed, and we have labor contracts that are a principal reason for filing. If the contracts are rejected, then we go back to not having the labor agreements, and we'll have to work some terms out with our employees. We'll have to do that anyway. And along the line, we're going to be doing an awful lot of discussions behind the scenes, no doubt, because eventually we're going to have to submit a plan of reorganization, as it's called in Chapter 11, excuse me, Chapter 9, but an adjustment of debts, as it's called in Chapter 9. This is where we tell creditors how we're going to pay them, because pay them we must. 